Dr. Elliot Rosenstein is with the Mount Sinai School of Medicine here now to talk about some new treatments for autoimmune diseases. Welcome, good to have you here. Thank you, Lord. Glad to be here. We're going to specifically start on lupus. Can you define for us what lupus is? Well, I think to understand lupus first, one has to understand the, the principle behind autoimmunity. Okay. So the, the immune system is the, the portion of the, the body that's devoted to identifying us as self mm -hmm. and separating us from external factors like infections, uh, viruses, bacteria. Mm -hmm. And the immune system normally would fight off these external factors. Autoimmunity or autoimmune disease, the immune system gets corrupted and instead of just attacking these external factors, it starts to attack some of our own constituents. So it's attacking healthy cells. So an autoimmune means your body is attacking itself. Exactly. And one of the autoimmune diseases is lupus. And, and that's the classical autoimmune disease. It's a classic diseases. autoimmune disease. Okay, so can you describe a little bit for us what kind of symptoms, what does lupus look like? Well, the most common symptoms are going to be rashes and, and joint complaints uh, due to inflammation in the, the lining of the joint. But lupus is a disease that knows no bounds. It can affect virtually any organ in the, the body, from, from the brain to the kidneys. And those are really the two organs that we worry about the, the most. All right. So are there different types of lupuses then, I would imagine? There are, there are several different types. Yeah. There, are, there are some very innocent types where it's really just the skin that's affected. And mm -hmm. those can be easily treated with, with topical therapies. Mm -hmm. But um, when, when the, the entire organism is affected, that's something we call systemic lupus. Mm -hmm. and, and then we're concerned about these other internal organs being affected. And, oh. and that has to be treated much more aggressively. Um, how in the world do you get something like lupus? It's a good question. We don't fully understand it. We do know that women get it much more often than men, about nine times as often as men do. We know that it's primarily a disease that affects younger women. So it's primarily between 15 and 55 that, that people get the disease. Um, it's, it's rare, but it can happen in, in the pediatric age group. Sometimes children can be born with lupus, and that's really a reflection of what's going on in the mothers. Does it know any racial bounds? Is it more common in African Americans, whites, Hispanics, Asians? It is more common in African Americans, and it tends to be more severe in African Americans. Okay, and so we don't really know what causes it. I, I really appreciate the fact that so much in the medical community, you don't know, and to flat out admit, we don't really know. Um, but how are you working in the field to try and get to the cause so you can come up with better treatments? Well, we've learned a lot about the intricacies of the immune system. And up until recently, the, the treatments that we used to, uh, to control this condition were, were, were treatments that broadly affected the immune system, just dampened the activity of the immune system and, and put people at risk of other complications of a suppressed immune system, particularly infection. But now that we, we've identified some of the key steps in lupus, we've come up with, uh, with treatments that specifically interfere with those steps. And we hope and, and the evidence would suggest are, are much more innocent in, in terms of side effects. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the treatments because there are so many different types. I guess the key factor is get to a doctor. Do you need to see a specialist? What kind of specialist would you need to see to diagnose to know for sure? Well, generally a dermatologist if the skin is the primary uh, site of involvement, but rheumatologists, which I am, mm -hmm. uh, rheumatologists very, very often are the ones that make the diagnosis. Rheumatologist has to do with arthritis, pain in the joints, correct? That's one of the many things that we do, but autoimmune diseases in general fall into the domain of the rheumatologist. Mm -hmm. But if somebody's kidneys are affected, then we're going to enlist the help of a nephrologist. Or if somebody's central nervous system is affected, we're going to enlist the help of a neurologist. Well, it seems like there are a lot of areas where there are crossovers. Is this often or can it be misdiagnosed? It can easily be misdiagnosed. One of the nicknames of lupus is the great imitator. So really? that gives you an idea of how varied the presentation of the condition can be. Right, so that's got to present a challenge for treatment. How important is early detection in controlling and maintaining lupus, uh, controlling the disease? Early detection is very important. Uh, there's a lot that we can do to try to prevent organ damage if we can identify the, the condition early and institute effective therapy. And again, let me follow up here. When I said control the disease, I say that uh, because, is it correct, there is no cure? That's correct. There is no cure. Most patients with lupus, systemic lupus, require some sort of therapy on an ongoing basis. Can they live a good quality of life, though? 
it, it's changed so much. Uh, Forty years ago, this was considered a fatal disease when it was systemic, when it affected the kidneys, for instance. Mm -hmm. but, but now, with the therapies that we have available to us, we can keep the condition un under control, and for the most part, people live long, healthy lives. All right, any other final thoughts that people should be aware of? Because, again, you get a rash, achy joints, you just kind of blow it off and think, eh, it's just nature. Sometimes it is just nature, but if, if symptoms persist, uh, don't just put up with it. Call it to the attention of one of your physicians, and, and hopefully the physician will have lupus in mind and refer you to the appropriate specialist. All right, Dr. Rosenstein, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to My us. My pleasure, Laura. Good thank to you. Have you here.